Old Grumpy Hunter here. What do those 22 crossbows have in common? One, they're all rated at speeds greater than 350 feet per second. Two, they all have limb failures. Those are just some of the images I've collected from social media in a three week period. That works out basically one bow per day. Since then, I've even collected more images. What caused them to fail? That I do not know, but I do have some ideas. The following is not in any order and most likely is not an all-inclusive list. Crossbow manufacturers are in a race to break 500 feet per second. Are the limbs too short? Was too light of an arrow used? Was the bow heat stressed? Is limb technology not keeping up with the advancement of the speed race? Was the bow abused? Let's look at some of those in a little detail. Crossbow manufacturers are in a race to break 500 feet per second. I've said this before, crossbow manufacturers are obsessed with both speed and kinetic energy. Those are the big numbers they put on the box. In my last video, I explained why kinetic energy does not matter and that it is overrated when talking about archery. In my flight times video, I compared flight times at different speeds. A bow shooting at 300 feet per second with an arrow weighing 435 grains takes 0.306 seconds to go 30 yards. A bow shooting at 400 feet per second with a bow weight of 435 grains takes 0.229 seconds to go 30 yards. That is a difference of 77 one thousandth of a second. That's less time than it takes for an eye to blink. Did you miss it? Take another look. Remember, even the fastest crossbow, the arrow cannot outrun the speed of sound. At 30 yards, it takes less than 0.17 seconds for the sound to reach the target. Are the limbs too short? Are the limbs being made shorter and the crossbow narrower so that they can be pulled back farther to get extra speed with the same or shorter draw length? I have a friend and when her recurved crossbow is cocked, the limb points are pointing almost straight back parallel with the rail of the crossbow. Are arrows too light? Are crossbow manufacturers and in turn crossbow users using light arrows to get that rated speed? Yes, there's nothing new. If you use a lighter arrow, its speed's going to go up. We all know that. Lightweight arrows can cause multiple problems. It can simulate a dry fire. More noise because of more of the crossbow's stored energy goes into the bow's components when shooting a light arrow. A heavier arrow requires more of the bow's stored energy to launch. Limb and other components can fail. The ATA and the IBO have a minimum grains arrow weight per pound of draw weight of the bow. This is for a reason. One is to help keep the bow from breaking. Was the bow heat stressed? Were any of those crossbows stored in a hot car? Limb material technology is not keeping up with the advancement of the speed race. Is it possible that in this need for speed that the crossbow manufacturers have, that they forgot about what happened to the vertical compound bows a few years back when they were in the quest for speed? Has the bow been abused? Has it been dropped? Has it been dry fired? Has it been fired with a poorly seated arrow? Has it hit something hard or something hit it hard? Has it been caught in a door, building or vehicle? Has it been kept cocked for days at a time? I don't have an answer as to why so many crossbow limbs are failing. What I do know is it's just not one brand and it appears to be bows greater than 350 feet per second. I'm not saying that limb failures don't happen to crossbow shooting less than 300 feet per second and that is one reason that I have extra set of limbs for my compound crossbow. What can you do to prevent your limbs from failing? First, there is no guarantee that limbs will not fail. But there are a few things you can do to delay it. Don't dry fire it. A dry fire has to be the most stressful thing that can happen to any type of bow. It may not break the limbs right away, but it can cause other damage. The shock of the dry fire, can, besides breaking the limbs, can knock the sights out of alignment, break things 
can stretch the string. It can cause the string to come off or break. It can knock other components off the bow or knock them loose. Make sure your arrow is properly seated. Don't leave it cocked forever. Some crossbow manufacturers have instructions on how long you can keep it cocked. One manufacturer states, do not leave it cocked for more than 24 hours. Don't abuse it. Treat it as if it's fine china. Try a heavier arrow. The loss in speed is not as much as you think. This screenshot is from social media. The name of the company and the model I have blocked out. The rated speed of this bow was over 400 feet per second. There's a lot of telling information in this image. Information like, faster, lighter crossbow cannot tolerate being cocked for extended periods of time. Quality control of the limb manufacturing is not the best. Arrows shipped with crossbows are too light for the draw weight of the crossbow. In this case, it's 60% of the suggested grains per pound of 3 grains per pound draw weight for crossbows. At 3 grains per pound draw weight, the minimum arrow weight for that crossbow should be 630 grains. Although the author has increased his or her arrow weight by 30%, still low based on the three grains per pound. How you treat your crossbow is strictly up to you. You can leave it cocked for days, weeks, months, or even all year long. You can use arrows that are too light and don't come anywhere near the minimum recommended of three grains per pound draw weight. You can store it in a hot car. You can drop it from the tree stand. You can bang it into things. You can dry fire it. And when, not if, the limbs break, you can send it in for a warranty repair while at the same time bad mouthing the manufacturer because they made a poor crossbow. Please don't get me wrong, I'm not saying there are some poorly made crossbows getting out of the factory in large numbers. But as a user, we have to take some responsibility for our actions that may have led to the failures. One of our actions is that undeniable quest for speed and falling for the manufacturer's big numbers on the box. Thank you for watching this Old Grumpy Hunter presentation. Please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to push the notification bell. Until next time, aim small, miss small.